<laughs> Good times. <laughs> yeah. Oh. This is for the brothers who ain't here. Hey, man, you pouring out our wine. This is for the brothers who ain't here. <laughs> Forget them, man. They ain't here. They don't get none. Oh, yeah. Man, look, there's a lot of brothers that's dead or in jail, and we just got to give them a little bit of respect. Understand? Yeah. You pour your wine out, we'll drink all. Uh, respect. <laughs> The kid goes first. Good kid, good, good kid. I'm getting out, Eddie. I'm getting out of what? The cocaine business. Oh, sweet Jesus. Man, those junkies must have knocked a hole in your head. Are you gonna give all this up? Eight track stereo, color TV in every room, and can snort a half a piece of dope every day. That's the American dream, nigga. Well, ain't it? Ain't it? End of your rotten life, you motherfucking dope pusher. I think possibly uh, the term black exploitation that has come to be the term to describe uh, the black films or African American films of the 70s was really coined for me, personally, <laughs> or Superfly, the film. Who was being exploited? Certainly uh, not me, my check's cleared. And uh, the people who worked for me, their check's cleared, so who the hell was being exploited? The people went to the show because they enjoyed what they were seeing. I was very happy to be working. These were roles that were given to me, you know. So for me to sit down and, and ponder and, and, and say to myself, I'm doing the wrong movie, there were many times that went through my mind politically. But I couldn't afford to take a political stand. I had to work. They fear certain images in Hollywood. You're okay as long as you project a certain image, image on, your, uh, on the screen, but after you go past a certain level, then, hey, wait a minute, we can't do that. You know, and, and it doesn't matter who you are. These were not serious movies. I thought, how could anyone look at this as a role model? They were like totally unserious movies, kind of frivolous, pure entertainment. Um, with little or no redeeming value. <laughs> we wasn't getting kicked in the ass and beat upside the head. Then they termed it as black exploitation, and I think it's extremely crude to us as a people. As a fan and, and also as a student of, of films during the 70s, um, it, it was an interesting period because it was really a lot of it fantasy. It was, it was not really based on as much uh, reality of life as it was what it was like our chance to say, if we rule the world, this is what movies would look like. Uh, what's the trouble, officer? It's plenty of trouble for you, Spook. Unless you turn right around and go back where you came from. This road's closed. Oh, yes, sir. We sure don't want no trouble. And neither do you, do you, Whitey? Well, sir, I sure don't. This is not about hate white folks. It's about love and freedom enough to die or kill for it if necessary. Now, you're going to need more than hate to sustain you when this thing begins. 
Well, it was my black heart to see you so concerned about us minority folks. Oh, come on, Chef. What is it with this black shit? Huh? You ain't so black. You ain't so white, baby. The term black exploitation was coined in 1972 to describe films that depicted African Americans in negative and stereotypical roles. In reality, the motion picture industry already had a long history of such portrayals. From white actors in blackface, a tradition carried over from the days of minstrel shows, to the sassy mammies and the shiftless coons of the 20s, 30s, and 40s, the black image in films has historically been steeped in negativity. The earliest images of blacks in film date back to the late 1800s, when Thomas Edison and William Dixon, his African-American lab assistant, invented the first motion picture projector, the kinescope. Edison began producing short documentaries called Actualities, which contained some of the first moving pictures of blacks. In 1915, filmmaker D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation dealt a devastating blow to the image of African Americans in films. Depicting African Americans as despicable villains in the Ku Klux Klan as heroes, the film not only featured white actors in blackface, but also black actors in demeaning roles. Despite the inflammatory images in Birth of a Nation, the movie helped give rise to independent African American filmmakers like actor turned producer Noble Johnson and the prolific Oscar Micheaux, who began producing motion pictures for the segregated black audiences known as race films. Hollywood, by the late 1920s, had begun to recognize the profit potential within the black community and began producing black cast films to capture the box office dollars of an audience that was still denied access to many theaters. By the late 40s and into the 50s, black cast films, much like the race films before them, were fading away, only to be replaced by Hollywood's attempt to reflect the civil rights movement and the changing mindset of American culture. With Sidney Poitier leading the pack, the 1960s saw more and more black faces on the screen. The increasing number of black performers in films would lead to more complex characters dealing with more complex issues, all of which were instrumental in the changes that were about to occur in the film industry. Well, you're pretty sure of yourself, ain't you, Virgil? Uh, Virgil, that's a funny name for a nigga boy that comes from Philadelphia. What do they call you up there? They call me Mr. Tibbs. Listen, I got a kid down there. She she can't possibly... I couldn't bring her up here. She can't possibly take all the racket and those, those things smashing through the windows. Well, you're her father. If you're stupid enough to go die in that trap, that's your business. However, I am not stupid enough to follow you. It is tough for the kid that old man is so stupid. Now, you get the hell down in the cellar. You can be the boss down there. I'm boss up here. Kyle, let gentler souls than ours build your utopia. You hate guns. You hate violence. So did we, remember? Our whole program was born out of nonviolence. You name me a people in all history less violent than we were. Name a people more patient, a people more forgiving of insult and abuse. But Whitey took up that gun. Whitey used violence. Whitey is the mother of violence. 